In this video, I'm going to talk about soil, heavy metals, and also these things. Tomatoes. This morning I was looking at a news article that popped up on my phone and it was really interesting because it brought up a subject which I'm getting asked a lot these days by people who are growing their own food and the question really about how to deal with or what the effects might be of certain heavy metals. I will put a link to this article in the description below. This article talks about lead specifically and the effects it has on tomatoes and how the presence of lead in the soil doesn't necessarily always manifest within the produce that you're creating. So just because you have high levels of a contaminant in your soil, heavy metals especially, which are very persistent, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be too detrimental to the food that you're growing. But there's a number of caveats associated with this, as well as a number of other risks. And I thought this would be an interesting topic just to cover quickly because as more and more people are growing their own food, I'm asked increasingly by others to test their soil for the presence of heavy metals or perhaps other chemical contaminants. Now lead, as we know, is a truly heavy, heavy metal. It's often used for its weight properties amongst other things, but it's not very good for plant growth. In fact, it can cause all kinds of problems for the very growth itself. But from our perspective, when we're growing food, our biggest concern with any of these heavy metals is that they accumulate in the plant tissue. So that means it kind of condenses what is present in the soil. But this article, which covers, talks about a very recent piece of research carried out by the University of Illinois, actually says that that isn't always the case. Just because you have high concentrations of something in the soil, in this case the heavy metal, which we don't usually want, it's not always a given that the plants that you're growing are going to absorb all of that. And they did this through testing the growth of tomato plants in soils which were well in excess of what would be considered safe. So in terms of parts per million, way up there, off the chart, beyond what is healthy and safe for humans. And then they were measuring the concentrations of lead when it came to harvest. And what they found was that when it came to harvest and they tested the tomatoes they'd produced, actually the levels of lead, the parts per million, were really, really low. And if you were going to get ill from it or have some long-term damage from consuming too much lead in your tomatoes, you would have to eat an extraordinary amount of tomatoes. So you really would have to um, eat tomatoes morning, noon, dinner, all the time in order to get sick. And obviously if you're younger or have a smaller body, you would eat and need to eat less. But the point here is it's an unrealistic amount of tomatoes that would need to be consumed in order for it to be a risk to you. However, they pointed out certain other risks associated with heavy metals in soil, and those are worth considering. So that could be just purely handling soil. If you have high concentrations of a heavy metal in your soil and you're working with that soil, you obviously are exposed to it. And over time, you could accumulate that heavy metals on your body if you're not wearing protective clothing, gloves, things like that. Or even worse would be you could inhale it and start to accumulate lead within your body or, this he or whatever heavy metal in your body. So you really do need to consider not just the produce you're growing, but also how you're interacting with the soil. And there may be ways around it, um, increasing the amount of compost usage, mulching, that can all help to suppress the free kind of particles of the contaminant, which could ultimately end up on your body if it's not going into the food. But my point in all of this is just because you have or 
haven't got something in high concentrations in the soil, it doesn't necessarily follow that you are going to have high or low concentrations in what you are growing. So the summary from all of this, if you have concerns about heavy metals in your soil, test your soil, test what you are growing. That means looking at the total concentrations in your soil and possibly the available concentrations in your soil as well and also looking at the total concentrations in the leaf tissue, the fruit, the vegetables that you're concerned about as well because ultimately that's what you're going to eat, that's what's going to go into your body and if there is a toxic element, heavy metal present, that is what you're going to begin accumulating in your body. Now this is a really great article as I've said, I'll put a link in the description associated with this particular video. The interesting fact is there's absolutely zero mention of the role or the effects on soil microbiology which as you'll know from my other videos if you haven't watched them I talk a lot about how soil life can actually serve as a bit of a workaround for the traditional uh, chemical and physical interactions within the soil. So there is going to be a role for soil microbiology within this and I would say that again if you have concerns about the quality or health of your soil growing environment a great place to start is beginning to focus on building soil life. But that wraps this video up. Uh, if you enjoyed it please give it a like. If you found it useful you should also consider subscribing to the channel because I put out a video every week where I talk about soil or things associated with soil and how to build more soil life and get that healthier uh, lifestyle that's centred around great quality, healthy, tasty food that you grow yourself as well. So do consider following the channel. Until the next video, I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.